yeah, I found, I found love in the Azores. Immediately fell in love with this incredible, lush, semi-tropical island that seems to be able to grow anything. Waterfalls, mountains, lakes, hot springs, the works. It's yeah. Flipping fantastic. One day went by for three years that I did not stop thinking about how enchanted I was during that, that visit. Why do so many Americans and Canadians currently relocate to the Azores to live there and to do business there? My name is Alana and I work for Magronis. We're a global citizenship and residency by investment company. So why do Americans and Canadians move to the Azores at the moment? There are so many more flights currently from the east coast of America to the Azores to facilitate this new demand. So it is not about the touristic side of the islands, but rather about life and about business and why people choose to settle here. It's an archipelago of nine emerald islands in the boundless North Atlantic icy cold ocean. So there's a lot of sea life, there's beautiful nature and scenery around. And so many of the people I met on the islands have said to me it reminds them of the Hawaii of 20 or 30 years ago. It's only five hours from the east coast of, uh, of America, so less than a five hour flight from Boston three and a half hour flight from mainland uh, Europe. So really quite an easy place to get to if you set your mind to it. And that's how many people actually end up on the Azorean Islands. They start a trip, they have a layover on Fayal or in San Miguel and end up falling in love with the Azorean Islands and settling there. The first guest that I'm going to interview when we get to the Azorean Islands is a gentleman called Anton Edersberg. He's got a very interesting academic background. He studied uh, international portfolio management and corporate finance from the London School of Economics. He later on did some further studies in humanities uh, in Arizona, started a business in Halifax. Later on, he founded another company, and this company specifically was involved in uh, telecoms infrastructure. He personally dug up half the streets between Midtown Manhattan and Wall Street because they had to lay the conduits for, for fiber. Um, so those are things that we all use today. So I think it'll be very interesting to see why somebody that has, has, has lived in so many parts of the world settles in the Azores. And maybe his love of sailing would explain that. He's a very accomplished sailor and the Azorean Islands is definitely a hotspot for the sailing community. Um, and that's probably part of the reason why he loves the Azorean Islands so much. So let's go and meet Anton. Why does a New Yorker live in the Azores? I was booking a flight from Lisbon to Boston, and I noted that one of them, one of the so-called direct flights, lasted for 30 hours. Okay. And uh, and it dawned on me that that included a layover in the Azores. It was the airline of this, of this archipelago, and I had the time, so I came and, and visited for 22 hours. The visibility was exquisite, good visibility, sunny day. And I, I had a fantastic experience that one day visit and I couldn't stop thinking of it afterwards. Not one day went by for three years that I did not stop thinking about how enchanted I was during that, that visit. And I, I looked for all kinds of chances to come back and explore further, but I really wanted to give it some time. And then the pandemic happened. Oh dear. The pandemic. Nobody wanted to see you. If they wanted to see you, it was on Zoom. Well, you can pretend to be anywhere on Zoom. Yes. Um, and so uh, uh, once the flights opened up again across the Atlantic in the pandemic, because they were closed for two or three months, I booked one of the first flights here. And okay. I've been here ever since, 20, oh my 23 months. So you haven't actually left? No, not, I've been, I mean, I've been to the mainland, but I've never been back to the new world since, uh, yes. since arriving here almost two years ago. So when you, when you moved here, what, what were you doing in New York at the time? I'd actually been living in Canada for 20 years. And, uh, and at the time I had gone to Austin, Texas when the pandemic hit and uh, suddenly was stuck in Austin. Uh, okay. then, then I transited up to Denver, Colorado after a few months of Austin when things started opening up a little bit. And from Denver I came here. 
And you wouldn't consider going home. I have not the least interest in returning to life in the States yeah. in the foreseeable future. What are the main reasons why you are staying here? What makes this a place that you that you can live for the next decade or forever? It's it's better than the rest of the world for me right now. I, I prefer to be here than in the new world and mainland Europe's a little bit crowded. Uh, the people here are wonderful. I have some fantastic quirky friends with great senses of humor, each of whom is an excellent cook. Beautiful nature, 142 hiking trails in this island. No two are the same and they are spectacular and life affirming. If you need to be in the European mainland, which I have to from time to time, it's so easy to get there. The little tiny airport, the car was parked directly in front. You didn't have to walk far to the yes, car. That's Probably cost true. two euros to park there while I was, you know, waiting to pick you guys up. Like logistics are easy. Everything's good. Please do subscribe to our channel and like this video. If you'd like to ask me any questions, please feel free to use the WhatsApp number in the material below. Let's drive to one of your good friends now. Let's go, who let's go a, visit some good, friends. Who is a good chef that said he's going to cook us a fabulous lunch. Oh, and he's such a wonderful, wonderful man. One thing that's really amazing about the supermarkets here and about food in the Azores generally, is the quality of the fresh fish. And they, okay. they, they come they come boat to the supermarket. Oh really? To the so, so supermarkets. It really, it really not is. not via middleman. Like uh, yes. it's amazing the quality. Off, off, off the boat straight to the supermarket. And this the low price of in, incredibly high value fish here. This is local fish? This is all local fish. To, I want to just show the, uh, the, the, the bacalao. Yeah. So this is the salted, salted dried fish that is used uh, to, to make a very traditional Portuguese uh, dish called bacalao. Here, here are the, here are the, big, here are the big pieces. Oh, there's a big one. It's like <laughs> baby bacalao, mama bacalao, papa bacalao. Oh, and, and like jumbo jumbo. It is so nice to see you again. Hello, oh, oh, we're giving you a hug. Yeah. I love, I love, I love everybody. Pete is larger than life. He's a very gregarious character. And if you are Canadian, you probably need no introduction to him. Pete started his early life as a very humble fruit and vegetable seller and fast went on owning a big chain of fruit and vegetable shops called Fruitique. He also started his career in national television. Chestnuts, potato, avocados. And that led to his career in the food television uh, industry. So he likes to say that he paved the way for people like Anthony Bourdain when he started his television show. And he graciously stepped down when Anthony, that was a little bit sexier and more interesting, came along. And then he focused on different businesses. He started a winery called Luckett Wines, based in Nova Scotia, and ran that business for many years very successfully to the point where he could hand that over to his daughter Gina when he decided to relocate to the Azorean Islands. It's not always sunny. We yes. have lots of sun, but today is one of them Azorean days where the, the mist comes in, down off the mountains. It's beautiful. It's warm. It's great for the complexion. You feel good. You're not sweating. It's fantastic. Right, where are we going? We can I'm going to my little oh. crazy barbecue here. Right. So in a past life, when uh, when you were famous and traveling the world for your cooking show, did you have other people cleaning your barbecue? Yeah, I did, did you, totally, did yeah. You, or did you have to do it yourself? I'm the janitor, laborer, sweeper up, head honcho, and dishwasher, all in one now. All in all. Yeah. So, so is that, that's what life in the Azores means. How long have you been here, Pete? Two years. So what made you come to the Azores? Every, yeah. every year for the last 10 or 15 years, I've gone somewhere off the radar, kind of out there in the world that yeah. I would find interesting or intriguing or different or unusual off yeah. the tourist path. And uh, the Azores was my choice uh, two years ago. Yeah. So I came here with my backpack, had a toot round, totally immediately fell in love with this incredible, lush, semi-tropical island that seems to be able to grow anything. Waterfalls, mountains, lakes, hot springs, the works. It's yeah. Flipping fantastic. And then I met this crazy real estate guy. He showed me this property. There was an old house on here and okay. the land was here, but it was not really developed. But yeah. anyway, bottom line is,
on that day that I saw it, I made an offer on the property. And okay. We, yeah, and I bought so it. So that was quite, just, quite a spontaneous uh, decision? Just, just like that. I felt this was for me. And then started growing stuff. Not that I needed too much help because you can literally grow anything here. Yes, it looks yeah. like Mother Nature takes care of, uh, it's amazing. of, of most of it. We have, we have bananas, figs, oranges, tangerines, lemons, passion fruit, chestnuts, and more. So we've got a bit of a whole mixed bag of vegetables growing and uh, tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers, watermelons, right down to the ocean, yeah. Cauliflower. So all of, all of yeah. this is yours all the way down? I know, to hard to ocean. believe. I'm like, yeah. It's amazing. King of the castle, yeah. Do you, yeah. Miss, do you miss anything about life back in Canada? You know, Canada is a great place and I built a, a couple of fabulous businesses there over the years and uh, I'm really, um, thrilled to be able to live there. I'm always about tomorrow, you know. Yes. And where, where to next? Where to next. So this could be forever for a lifetime, or you know, in five years time, I could be tootling off to Borneo or somewhere uh, wild and crazy. <laughs> yep, yeah. you, never, you never know what life brings you. Or just look at it. That looks lovely. Yeah. Thought about a restaurant. Yes. And, uh, but I didn't want to do a regular sit-down dining restaurant for table dope by the people just sitting random. Yes. I thought I want to do groups, special groups that come oh, to a, a farm-to-table dining experience. Farm-to-table yeah. groups of people, so, so that's, that's going to be your, your business for and, the next... And a little accommodation thrown in as well. Okay, so. are you developing the accommodation here? On yeah, the, on the I've got a few rooms here, uh, yeah. lovely by the pool here, a couple of fabulous suites right on the pool. I've okay. got another little apartment there, and then across the road, I've got an opportunity to build three more units, which we're okay. just drawing up plans for now. And how did you find the actual development here? Um, d d doing it, you bought the land because you yeah. found a fabulous agent that showed you this. But then what, what came next? It's you... quite a process. It's a process here yes. of bureaucracy and okay. paperwork. That's some of the, you know, there's no such place as paradise, although you think this is, but there's always some little hiccups along the way. Okay. So it is a little challenge to get stuff done. And yes. I always like to get things moving. Okay, you know. so not for the faint hearted then. Well, you've got to be prepared, be a little patient okay. and uh, wait for stuff and uh, do all the paperwork. And if you don't speak Portuguese like moi, oh, it can be challenging, so you've got to make, friend with, make friends with Portuguese people who can help you. That's what I do. So is your pool heated? Um, not today, Josephine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it is heated, yes. But I turned it off just a week ago because things were starting to because warm it up Because it was summer and the sun yeah. was shining. The tiles, the tiles are beautiful. So this is all sourced locally on the island or did you have to bring things from the mainland? This is from the mainland, yeah. Lots of stuff you have to get from the mainland. And oh my goodness, this so, is beautiful. Yeah, not finished, but nearly. Beautiful. So this is probably the room that the family all want to stay in for free. Well, they actually have <laughs> got the same room on the next door yes. and then the, the suite on the other side there. They've all got great views. This is fantastic. So what would you rent a room like this for? Yeah, I've got some kind of ideas, but I, mm. I've got to do some more research on the market right now. Yeah. I'd say it's going to be 150 to 200 a night. Okay. Yeah. I think the luxury of the Azores is not, is not in the property, it's in, the, it's in nature. Yeah, so true. Oh, this is going to be down here actually, the steps going down, not finished yet because we're still coming to the end of the construction, but this will be our wine cellar uh, for, oh. the, for the dining and I can do wine tastings in there and uh, show them selection of wine that we okay. have to offer. That's very, yeah. that's very nice. So this is another room here, yeah. Just a, a little bit bigger, a little bit more space. Yeah. If somebody wants to stay a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm going to put a kitchenette in here, a little in this one. Just yeah. a small area to uh, to cook food up there. Just a nice sink, a little cook stove, small fridge. Yeah. We're going to have to book when we come back. Oh, you know it. Because you'll be too busy. You know it. Oh, so that is just that's the commercial. Call it the commercial kitchen. Commercial. This, is this is yeah. Pete's kitchen. This is Pete's kitchen. Yeah. Well, you're living in the best place to have a dry ager for beef. Oh, the beef you here know is fantastic. It. Yeah. And if you want to see my pièce de, de résistance, a very very big fridge. Yes. Yes. Oh. 
Oh, that is lovely. And this here, by the way, these are this is a very traditional Azorian, this stone arch, that they had it for their cooking spots. And in many of them, they'd have a stone oven right in this arch. Yeah. And, is this uh, the alluvial, alluvial stone or? Yeah, it's all local uh, volcanic uh, stone, yeah. yeah. One of the very interesting things about building and construction on the Azorean Islands um, is that they use alluvial rock or volcanic stone to do a lot of their construction. Now, obviously, there's alluvial stone in abundance given all the seismic activity on the islands. It also apparently retains heat a lot better and resists uh, seismic activity more. And this is also the reason why so many Americans and Canadians are actually of Azorean uh, heritage or background. Um, in the 20th century, there was a lot of volcanic uh, activity on the islands, and this led to many Azorians permanently leaving the island when their homes were destroyed and their livelihoods were destroyed. And they fled to America and Canada, which opened, opened their hearts and welcomed them. And today you have the two largest diaspora of Azorians in both the US and Canada. And it seems like life has come full circle. Many of these people of Azorian uh, heritage are now relocating and coming back uh, to the Azorian islands. How's your internet connectivity here? Top notch. Oh really? Yeah, top notch. I'll show you upstairs. That is great. Are yeah. there are there different um, different providers, or is there only? Uh, I think two or three providers. Okay. This is very decadent. <laughs> <laughs> Having a bathtub in the middle of your bedroom, I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's after me hard have you, day's have work. You, have you used it? No, it's only. No. No, I haven't. It's only just got. It's just got ready. The road infrastructure, these uh, beautifully engineered highways, which are relatively new, is fantastic, all new. Two generations ago, there were almost no automobiles on these islands. Like, you know, the, only the very privileged had automobiles. Like, yeah. this is totally new. Are you renting this car? Or yeah, like this is a long-term rental. Uh, and for me, the, the appeal was that it's just, you know, if the car's dirty, I, I get a brand new one. If, if, uh, if it gets a worn down tire, I get a brand new one. If, if it smells a little bit, I get a brand new one. Okay. You know, people could rent a car here short term off season for one or two euros a day, just like in mainland Portugal. You know, there's a, any variety of cars, high-end Mercedes, sedans and uh, SUVs and, you know, all kinds of nice things. No, this is the old, it's a, it's a newer building of the hospital complex, which is the main hospital in Ponte Delgada. And yes. they, pretty, they pretty much have everything. The healthcare is very good. And this new private hospital in Lagoa, the whole aim of it was to engender a form of medical tourism for um, you know, different types of treatments, oncology patients, uh, things of that nature. And it's working. It, yes. only, it only started operations um, March 31st last year. What is it that you're doing here now? Some friends or colleagues and I undertook a renewable energy project here. Two thirds of the electricity is still generated by burning fuel, oil, and diesel. On the island? On nine different islands. We'll replace roughly 12% of the power that's generated here. Okay. Um, with um, photovoltaic power. Yes. You know, solar power, yes. solar panels on six islands. So, so how do you find the food different um, in the Azores? Have you picked up any local, is there any local peculiarities or anything? The food ingredients which you can uh, access here in the, the Azores are fantastic. They're just incredible. The food culture that was already here, I think while there's real wholesome, great food, there's never been an exciting food culture here. You know, it's very sort of, how can I say it and be nice? Peasant food, simple food. You know, lots of potatoes, lots of sausage, lots of blood sausage, uh, yeah. lots of pork, lots of grilled food. But nice, nice stuff, but nothing that really wowed me. But since okay. then, I found a couple of great restaurants in uh, uh, to eat Otaka. Oh, have you been Otaka, there? Otaka, no, nope, nope, oh, I have not. So that's a, place, that's a place to visit. Absolutely, first class, world class, incredible cuisine. But no, the food culture, it's interesting, is, um, it was not vibrant, but I think along with tourism, 
which seems to be coming alive because I just see the potential. The potential is incredible. It's like the lost world, this is when it comes to tourism. Yeah. It was off the map for the whole world. Nobody knew about the Azores until all of a sudden. It was a sleeper, what I call a sleeper. Yeah. It was just unknown and for some obscure reason, airplanes weren't landing here and tourists weren't coming, but it's happening. I've seen in just two years that tourists are arriving, which is good and bad. Because yeah. we don't want it to become a Canary Islands or Madeira, because there's definitely a lot of magic about uh, the Azores, just as they are with this great natural beauty around you. But I do think there is potential for a certain type of tourism. We get to my favorite topic, which is taxes. So this is take 10 because I am continuously told that I have to smile. And I said, but nobody smiles about taxes. Somehow I am wrong. If you are considering relocating to Portugal or the autonomous region of the Azores, which is part of Portugal, you will benefit from the non-habitual residency program, also called the NHR. Now this is actually something worth smiling about um, because it gives you a 10 year tax break whether you are a retiree, a person relocating and starting a business and you're an entrepreneur, you qualify for certain tax, uh, tax breaks and categories of tax. So you can actually reduce your taxes to between zero and 20%, which is a very big benefit for people closer to retirement or even young people starting an entrepreneurial business. It was brilliant on Portugal's part because it got people to become tax compliant. Seasonal residents who were overstaying their seasons from yes. places like Sweden in particular or England hugely. You know, yes. there's so many Brits living in Portugal the in the Algarve who weren't paying any taxes here. Portuguese source ordinary income is taxed at a maximum rate of 20%. If you're a high income earner in Portugal without that treaty, you're taxed at a rate of 50% circa, okay. could be even in excess of 50%. So you could be a retiree from somewhere else, but start a different business here and have and have a very favorable Absolutely, tax. I've, I've started a business here and um, I love the fact that I will pay no more than 20%. If you want to have a look at more detail about uh, the NHR, there's a separate video about that and you can find it in the link below and go and see why the NHR makes it such an attractive proposition to move to Portugal. Let's cook. Okay. I think we need to crack a bottle of wine now. You've been, oh, work, I, you've been working think... hard. So the mid to south Portugal still produces great white wines. And mm. you would imagine the zones which are so hot would be great on the red, which they are, yeah. but it surprises me that it can produce these lovely, fresh, acidic whites like this. Were yes. So fantastic. We're going to remove them prickly top, and then we're going to cut this one right in half. Remove all that fluff in the middle. I'll lose all these leaves. That's what we're looking for. Yes. Put the lemon juice to it dunk it in boiling water, then I pat it dry and I let them cool. Then I make some tempura batter. Then, tempura. Yeah, in the tempura dip. And, and then you it. serve it just as it is. It yeah. could be as plain garlic, Jane garlic as garlic. mayonnaise. Yeah, it could be a little garlic touch, it could be a little tzatziki. Whatever tickles your fancy, but it yeah. needs a little dip to yeah. give it a bit of life. Excellent, so now I know what to do with the artichokes in the Azores. The new Elena and Pete cooking show coming your way soon. And just the, 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 the contrast, I mean when, when people make a drastic move like this, there, there must be things that you that you miss. Not really. No? Not 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 anything that I can explain to you. There is nothing that I miss from uh, from North America at this time. Yes. If there's occasionally something that I need, some consumer product and I can't get it here, I'll ask someone who's flying out here to bring it for me. And they're generally very portable things. Yes, and does Amazon deliver here? Oh yes, yeah, the best ones are from uh, Germany and from Spain. Yes, and yes, it's just like, I, have, I have found that too. Muy rápido, very, very fast. So do you miss anything about your, call it your past life? No, because I've got so much to do here. I've got, uh, I'm a bit of a dreamer, you know, of uh, 
what a place can be and what it can become and what I can achieve. I love building stuff yeah. and that's my 40 of my life. When I've got there, you know, maybe I, I start looking for something new again, but to build something from, from nothing, scratching and scraping, clawing your way up and, uh, yeah. and trying to create something out of nothing, that's my cup that's of tea. So, satisfying. Well, there's eight yeah. more islands for you to go and do the same on. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've only been to one of the other islands. So you moved here on your own, and you've been here for nearly two years. Yeah, um, I've been working. I've been working my ass off. Like I work, I work six plus days a week. Yes. On this project, and that's that's part of what ma has made living here so simple. Because uh, I think Freud defined happiness as a balance between love and work. I couldn't imagine moving here and not having, you know, something interesting to, and did to you, work did on. And did you did you find love when you moved to the island? Yes. The short answer is yes, but not just for one person. Uh, and not that I have multiple lovers, but I have some great friends whom I genuinely feel that I love. I have a gang here of people yes. who are my, who, all of whom I love. But I have met a category of Americans here over and over that are not merely American. They're multinational already. They've been yes. traveling, who yes. are not monoglot in their thinking or in their, in their culture, who don't try to impose uh, their expectations about consumerism or politics or culture on the on the society that, that, that they've adopted uh, yes. to live in those are the ones who are finding their homes here in my limited experience and I, okay. and I would count myself among them oh back to this topic of loving oneself yeah I found I found love in the Azores I, I love myself better it's true yes. Anton, Anton, come and join us. There we go. What a surprise. Glad you joined us, Anton. Let's, oh, have, a, let's have a glass. Thanks for having me over. Cheers, Pete. Thank you so yeah. much for cooking. Anton, thank you for hosting and driving us around. My simple pleasure. <laughs>